Hey everyone, welcome back to AshDev. In this episode three of our tutorial series, we're going to add a follow camera and wheel rotation in our car to make it feel more alive and dynamic. First, let's add a camera to follow our car around. Open up the package manager and install Cinemachine. Once that's done, create a Cinemachine virtual camera and drag your car into the follow and look at fields. Under the body settings, choose Simple World Follow with World Up for the binding mode and set both the X and Y damping to zero. Adjust the camera's position according to what fits your scene best and our camera setup is complete. Before we go any further, I want to tell you guys that from now on, after we finish a tutorial series, we'll share the project files on our Discord server. This project will be available right after the part 4 is released, but you've got to act fast because each project will only be available for two weeks only, so be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. Next, let's make our wheels align correctly with the positions determined by their Raycast hit. Under the header named References, create an array of game objects called Tires and initialize it with four elements, corresponding to our car's four tires. Now, under a new region titled Visuals, create a function named set tire position. This function should accept two arguments. The first is the game object tire that you want to position, and the second is the vector3 target position, where you intend to place the tire. Inside this function, simply assign the tire's position to the target position. Moving on to the suspension logic, within the if statement that checks if the ray hits the ground surface, adjust the position of the corresponding tire in the tire's array. Use hit.point plus ray points dot up, multiplied by the wheel radius for setting the tire's position. We added this because the position set is typically the center of the game object. Without adding the wheel radius, the tire would appear half buried in the ground. By adding the wheel radius, we'll get a visually accurate placement. In the scenario where the ray does not hit the ground surface, handle the tire positioning within the else block of the suspension logic. Here, we're going to set each tire's position to correspond with the airborne state. For the tire associated with the currently evaluated ray, adjust its position to the ith element's position in the ray points array, then subtract vector 3 dot up multiplied by the max distance. This calculation places the tire at a position extended by the maximum distance the ray could travel, essentially simulating how far down the tire would be if not obstructed by the ground. The subtraction of max distance serves a specific purpose as it inverses the direction of vector 3 dot up. Now, let's enhance the visual dynamics of our car. Under a new header called Visuals, define a float tire rot speed with a value of 3000 which will determine the rotational speed of the tires as the car moves. Within the Visuals section, introduce a function named Tire Visuals. In this function, create a for loop to iterate through the tires. Within the loop, check if the current tires are the front ones, identified by indices 0 and 1. For these front tires, rotate them along the x-axis using the formula tire rot speed multiplied by car velocity ratio multiplied by time dot delta time. Here, transform dot rotate ensures the tire rotates around its local axis. Vector 3 dot right specifies the rotation should occur around the tire's local x-axis. Tire rot speed sets the pace at which the tires will spin. Car velocity ratio adjusts the rotation speed to match the car's current speed, ensuring a realistic rotation that corresponds with how fast the car is moving. Time.delta time is used to make the rotation smooth and consistent across different frame rates. For the rear tires, indexed as 2 and 3, apply a similar rotation mechanism in the else block of the loop. However, replace car velocity ratio with move input. This change means the rear tires will rotate based on the acceleration input that is move input. Mirroring RIA world behavior where the rear wheels respond to the car's acceleration rather than its overall velocity. And finally create a function visuals and call tire visuals here and call this function in fixed update. Now, in the editor, create an empty parent game object for each tire. Position these parent game objects precisely where the actual tires are located and name them according to their respective positions. After that, Drag and drop the actual tire game objects into the tires array you prepared earlier. Now if we play the game, the tires are rotating. 
Now, to add a turning animation for the front tires based on steering input, first navigate to the References section in your script. Here, introduce a new array of game objects named Front Tire Parent. Initialize this array with a size of 2. Next, under Visuals header, declare a float called Max Steering Angle to store the maximum angle the wheels can rotate when steering, and set this value to 30. Inside the Tire Visuals function, create a float named Steering Angle, which equals the steer input multiplied by Max Steering Angle. This calculation allows you to determine the steering angle relative to the player's input. In the IF block of this function, adjust the local Y rotation of the front tires to match the steering angle, while leaving the rotations on the other axes unchanged. Now, return to the editor, drag and drop the parent game objects of the front tires into the front tires array. With everything set up, press play to test the changes. And now we got our tires rotating on steer. That's it for this part. In the next segment, we'll add other enhancements like skid marks and skid smoke to our car controller. See you in the next part. If you found this helpful, give a thumbs up and subscribe to AshDev. Don't forget to join our Discord community for more discussions, the link is given below. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.